But hey there, welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Kiri, and I'm a flower farmer here in western Washington in Zone 8A. Today is March 13th. It is the last weekend before spring officially is here, and this is a big weekend for seed starting for me. And actually, I probably should have done this last weekend, but no big deal. We should be good to go. But I am going to be starting some of my tender annuals today. So tender annuals generally should be sown six to eight weeks before your last frost date. And right now I think we're at five weeks before. Um, so that is totally okay. So first things first, we just want to start with some lightly moistened seed starting mix and fill up all of our trays. Today I will be sowing seven 72 cell plug trays and then also a couple pots. And if you recall, I've explained I only have one grow light and it can hold four plug trays. So some of these are going to have to stay out here. I feel like I have a pretty good system now that I have been sowing seeds for a while. So in this first tray here, I'm just doing a third, a third, a third. So that's about 24 each of Queen Lime Red, Queen Lime Zinnia, and then Double Click Cosmo. So these are all actually plants that you can start direct seeded outside. Um, and there's some debate about whether or not it's actually hurtful to start these inside because zinnias are a little bit sensitive to transplant shock. So sometimes when you transplant them out, the first couple blooms that come off of the plant might not be double if they're supposed to be double um, like these versions. But a lot of people say that they have a lot of success starting them inside and then transplanting them out. And so since I only have a couple seeds of each of these Queen Lime series, I am going to start them inside because I do want to make sure that I get good germination on them. The other reason why I want to start these inside is because I want to get a head start on these. So like I said in my seed order video, I'm kind of worried about what late May, early June is going to look like in terms of focal flowers. So I've got my roses planted out, but hopefully they'll bloom by then. But that's really the only focal flower that I will have this year. So if I can start these now and then plant out some partially developed plants right around the last frost date, then this should give us a head start. So these need to be sown a quarter inch deep. So I'm just making a small impression with my finger. And then I'll sow those in there and then cover them up. I've never grown Queen Lime series zinnias, so I'm very excited to see what these look like. See what all that rage is about. <laughs> I'm also curious to see how the green Queen Lime zinnias do here because I've heard that some people actually don't sell green flowers very well. Um, I think green flowers are beautiful, but sometimes they don't do well as market flowers, so it'll be fun to see if people actually enjoy buying them. Cosmos are one of those plants that are very easy to grow when you direct seed them. But you can also start them indoors. And I'm starting these indoors because they are day length sensitive, so they bloom under short days. But I've read that starting them inside will help them be less sensitive to day length and to bloom more prolifically during the peak of summer. So next up is Gonfrina globosa mix, and I think this will be a really wonderful filler this season. Some people do secession sow this because even though Gonfrina is a cut and come again flower, it just gets tired over the season. So this packet only has about 75 seeds in it and so I'm going to sow this whole tray and I probably won't do a secession but we'll just have to see. So most of the seeds that I'm sowing today have a lot of similar characteristics because they like similar growing conditions. So most of them need to be sown six to eight weeks before the last frost date at about a quarter inch depth. Wow, it says that there's a minimum of 75 seeds in here and I just sowed just about one per cell. A couple got a few extra and I still have so much more in there. So that is awesome. I'm just getting so excited for the upcoming season and it's starting to feel like spring around here. The robins are back and it's warming up, but Spring also brings a lot of rain, so this whole next week we're going to have quite a bit of rain. It's even raining right now, you probably can hear it. So, but you can't have flowers without those showers. 
Next to sew is basil. So I am sewing 36 cells of cinnamon basil and 36 cells of lemon basil. And I think this will be a wonderful filler this year. And I'm doing these two different varieties because the cinnamon basil has more purpley leaves, which will look nice with like on Freya that I just sewed that is purple. And then the lemon basil also has more chartreuse green leaves. So I think that'll be nice as well. I love how every time I start to talk to you guys, some semi drives by and blasts your eardrums out. So very sorry for that. Uh. I'm going to secession sew basil throughout this season as well. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how these do in bouquets. I hear that it can be kind of a pain to harvest though because it will wilt um, right after you harvest it. So you have to make sure that you hydrate it and condition it well before you put it in bouquets. So something to keep an eye out for. I wonder, has anybody tasted these basils? Like, I know everybody grows them for cut flowers, but has anybody eaten them? Do they taste good? <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a try. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want cinnamon flavored anything that has basil in it. I did already sew some baby's breath outside. Uh, Drixie did that, but we're gonna see how it does inside because uh, I heard it does well either method, so we will just have to see. But I haven't seen my baby's breath germinating, so maybe this won't be faster to germinate than outside, probably. Well, let's see which one we get flowers off of first. So this needs to just be barely covered with an eighth inch of soil. These are pretty small seeds and I probably could use the toothpick method for this, but I'm just gonna throw these in here. Next up is Celosia and I have the Flamingo Feather Celosia, which I'm really excited to try this year. And then I have some Pompous Plume Mix that I grew last year, which was wonderful. And I do have the Crisada Mix, which is the like one that looks like a piece of coral or like a brain. I don't think I'm going to grow that this year, just because I feel like it's really strange to use in arrangements because the stem is so thick and it's like, it's like a shim is what it looks like. It's like a skinny piece of stem that is like flat but also very wide and it's also pretty large so I don't know. I don't have confidence that I can work those into arrangements and I have pretty limited space so I'm just going to dedicate it to ones that I know I can use very well. So this needs light to germinate so we don't really want to cover it. We just want to firm it into the soil. And I'm definitely sensing a pattern. Any seed that needs light to germinate is typically teeny tiny. So far I've had really good germination with seeds from Johnny's. So those I'm sowing just one seed per cell, but some of these seeds that are left over from last year, I'm sowing a couple seeds per cell because the seed is a little bit older and some of the seeds might not be viable. Next up, I'm going to be sewing a whole tray of Sweet Annie. And I'm excited to see how this does as a dried flower uh, because I might make some wreaths for the fall or even winter. There's a lot of craft markets where I live, so I might be able to sell some dried flower wreaths at those markets. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, I think this breaks the record for smallest seed I've ever sown. My final tray is going to be some sage and some carnations. These are again leftover seeds that I have from last year and I'm going to give them a try and I think I may plant them up with the roses in the raised bed. I think that'll look nice, right? Let me know what you think. And I'm a little bit late on starting this stage. It says eight to 10 weeks before your last frost, but I think it'll be okay. So both of these plants are perennial and the carnations won't be blooming until next year. So I probably won't be able to harvest anything off of either of these plants until next year, especially because the sage can be a little bit of a slow grower in terms of reaching the height that we need for cut flowers. Um, so probably won't see anything on this until next year. These carnations are the Shabahad mix. 
Um, so there's pink and white and then kind of Picotty style. So I think these will look nice. And then again, thinking ahead, these bloom in late spring to early summer. So next year, I'll be able to fill that gap that I am kind of worried about that I won't have a lot of flowers besides roses. And carnations and roses, that's like a classic mix. Maybe some people might think that's a little dated, but I don't know. Sometimes things are cliche or classic for a reason. <laughs> All right, the final two things that I'm sewing in these pots here, because I don't need a whole bunch of them, is the St. John's wort, and then also some French marigold seeds for my vegetable garden. But these I will use for cutting, and really this is the Hypericum berries, is what we're looking for, which will come in the fall. So, I'm very excited for that, because that's like a florist classic, and I really love the way that they look in arrangements. One thing to watch out for though is that this can be considered invasive, so I'm planting it in a patch over by my deck um, that I will keep managed pretty well. But this is a short-lived perennial and it does have medicinal uses, um, so might do something with that, I don't know, we'll see. But probably just keep it to cutting for now. This just needs to be surface sewn in the light aids germination, so it should be good to go. All right, final step is a light dusting of vermiculite. And man, I have to say that this has been a game changer for me this season. This is my first time actually using vermiculite and I think it is so awesome. It really does help prevent the algae growth and it helps to keep the soil a little bit moister for a little bit longer. So basically it makes it a little bit lower maintenance. And I've had this small bag for this whole time that I've been sowing seeds this season. So I've sown, let me think, I don't even know, 20 seed trays so far this season and I think I haven't even used half of it. So it's a good purchase for sure. So now that all of these seeds are sown, I've got seven trays filled up. We've got to kind of get strategic in how we're going to deal with these. So these are heat loving tender perennials. So most of these are going to germinate at warmer soil temperatures. So the greenhouse, the high that I've recorded in the last couple days was 73 degrees and right now it's 61 degrees in here and I'm hardening off my hardy annuals in here before being transplanted out. So I've been trying to control the temperature so it doesn't get too hot in here because they don't really like that. But at the same time, we want it to be warm enough in here that the soil temperature gets up to the temperature that most of these will germinate at, which is around 70 degrees. And so the ambient air temperature is usually about 10 degrees warmer than the soil temperature. So the greenhouse needs to be about 80 degrees in here to reach the temperature that these need to be in to germinate outside. So I'm going to prioritize these. So the Queen Lime Zinnias, those are really important to me as well as the Cosmos because those were very expensive seeds. I got about 25 seeds per packet for $4 a piece pretty much as well as the Cosmos since these are the double click from Johnny's. So these are definitely going inside under the lights and probably on the heat map. The basil is also a high priority plant for me since this is a really important filler and I don't have a whole bunch of filler right now that I'm planning for so I want to make sure that this does well as well. The baby's breath is technically a hardy annual so I think I'll just leave it out here to germinate. The sage and carnations are not a high priority for me because we already know that those are not going to be blooming this year, so if they get a little bit of a later start by just germinating outside, I think that's fine. So that one's definitely going to stay out. Sweet Annie also is not a high priority for me because that I'm probably mostly going to use dried, so I think I'll leave that out here as well. So the seeds that are going to go inside with me are the Cosmos the Zinnias, the Basil, I think I'll take the Gumfrina and the Celosia inside as well. So what's staying outside to germinate in the greenhouse is baby's breath, sweet annie, sage, and carnations. All right, here we are at my grow lights and there's a lot happening here. So my eucalyptus is slowly but surely making some progress and growing. So that's wonderful. And then check out the mahogany splendor. 
it's <laughs> huge. So this is probably going to go out into the greenhouse very soon. I'm just worried about some of our night temperatures. They keep getting a little bit too cold for this heat-loving tender perennial. So this will probably just stay in here for a little bit longer. And all of these pots are a project I've been working on, so you'll have to wait for the next video to see how this is going. Alright, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.